Today we are going to discuss population genetics and specifically focus on how natural selection affects genotype and allele frequencies. First, let's go over the basics of natural selection. Natural selection occurs when certain individuals in a population have adaptive traits that allow them to reproduce more or produce more viable offspring than those without the adaptive trait. Individuals who reproduce more successfully are said to be more fit and selection occurs due to the differential fitness of traits. Let's use a simple example to show how this works. Let's say that a smiley face is more fit than a circle. Because of this, let's say the smiley produces six more smileys. And circles produce none. Now if we say smileys are genotype big A, big A, and circles are genotype little a, little a, we can see why future generations would have more big A than little a alleles and more big A, big A than little a, little a genotypes. Now that we have gone over the basics of natural selection, we can describe the three different types of selection, directional, stabilizing, and disruptional. Let's first look at our original population. As you can see here, this population is average and most individuals are heterozygous or big A, little a but in directional selection, one of the homozygous genotypes is selected for. Let's see what happens if little a, little a was selected for. As you can see, there are now more little a than big a, little a, or big a, big a individuals, and more little a, little a alleles. However, if big a, big a was selected for, the opposite would be true, with more big a, big a than big a, little a, or little a, little a individuals, and more big A alleles. Now let's go back to our original population and see how stabilizing selection would have an effect. In stabilizing selection, the heterozygous individuals are selected for. And as you can see, the new population has more big A, little a genotypes than big A, big A, or little a, little a. However, stabilizing selection does not alter allele frequency and actually causes the big A and little a alleles to be more equal. The last type of selection is disruptive, which favors both the little a, little a, and big A, big A genotypes. And as you can see, there will be an increase in the big A, big A, and little a, little a genotypes, but the big A and little a alleles will remain equal. Now let's use a population of rabbits to show how these different types of selection work in a real world example. Let's say that in this population of Alaskan rabbits, there are white rabbits with genotype little b, little b, gray rabbits with genotype big B little b and black rabbits with genotype big B big B. During the winter, white rabbits survive better or have a higher fitness than the other rabbits because as you can see, they blend in with the snow. This is an example of directional selection and the little b little b Genotypic frequency, as well as a little b allele, will increase over time. As the winter ends and spring begins, the selection pressures on our population also change. Now that the snow has melted, gray rabbits blend in better and survive longer and the white rabbits no longer have the upper hand. This would be an example of stabilizing selection because the big B, little b, gray rabbits are selected for, resulting in an increase in the frequency of the big B, little b genotype and a more equal allelic frequency of the big B and little b. During the summer, a new species of fox migrates to the area where rabbits live and only hunt gray rabbits. This results in disruptive selection, freeing the big B, big B black rabbits and little B, little B white rabbits. This increases the big B, big B and little B, little B genotypes. 
but the allele frequency remains equal. Now that we have seen a real-life example of how natural selection can alter the allelic and genotypic frequencies in a population, let's go over a common mathematical problem you may see in a genetics class. The goal of these types of problems is to calculate the frequency of survivors after selection. As you can see in the table below, you will usually be given the initial genotypic frequencies and each genotype's fitness value. In this table, we will be using our directional selection rabbit example. As you can see from the fitness values, white rabbits with the genotype little b little b have the largest fitness. Now that we have some background, we can begin to calculate values and fill in our chart. First, we need to calculate the initial frequency of the big B and little b alleles. To do so for the big B allele, simply take the initial frequency of the big B big B genotype 0.12 and add it to half of the frequency of the big B little b genotype 0.5 times 0.31 which equals 0.275. Repeat these steps with the little b little b genotype to find the initial frequency of the little b allele. Next we can fill out the unadjusted survivors row by simply multiplying each initial genotypic frequency to its corresponding fitness value. These values, 0 0.06, 0 0.248, and 0.57, can be added together to find the average fitness, which equals 0.878. Now that we have calculated the average fitness, we can find the frequency after selection by dividing the number of unadjusted survivors in each column by the average fitness as shown. The final step in these problems is to find the new allelic frequencies via the same calculations as the initial frequencies but using the new genotypic frequencies. Now you can see that the white rabbits were selected for it because the little b little b genotypic frequency increased and the little b allelic frequency also increased, which is directional selection. You should now have a better understanding of the different types of natural selection, how these types of selection alter allele and genotypic frequencies within a population based on the fitness value of heritable traits, and how the frequency after selection can be calculated. Thanks for watching.